G'day, I'm Clive and welcome to CDP Outdoors. Today, have a look at the Nature Hike Cloud Up 3. The Nature Hike Cloud Up 3 comes with a mat or footprint or ground sheet, whatever you call it. it comes with pegs, we've got poles in here, we've got the fly and the tent part itself. Pegs. I have used this tent the other day with my granddaughter and I didn't count the pegs or anything then so we'll do it now. Let's say some are in and some are out. Okay they're the Y-shaped pegs which I like. I've never had any issue with these but we've got one, two, three Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen pegs, and we've got three. I think it is no four extra guys in here. Now I won't be putting them on today, but I'll show you the points where they go. Pegs in that bag for now. Okay, easy fits back in the bag. I rolled it up, put the strap around. See this side is a little bit thicker, but I didn't flatten it out even, and it still went in the bag. It comes with a strap in the middle. Falco on it. We'll drop down there to hold it all together. In here is the pole. Now this is called a single pole but it's made up of multiple sections and they're all held together by a bungee cord. They're clicking nice and easy. And this goes to a Y hub. Now on this one the bungee cords need tightening a bit, but they still did the job. Now whilst I've got it, this one here, which is one piece, two three, let's get it in, and a fourth piece there. This is the front section which goes at the front where the door is and the rear one has only got three of these points because the back of this tent is actually lower. And we've got a spreader uh, on this one which is four sections making the single one. So that sits in there nice. And when you put your tent up, that goes that way round. So not much difference between under or over. A lot of people say it goes underneath. But yeah, we'll do it over today, see how it looks. Here we go here, one, two, three sections into the Y hub at the back. There's not any colour coding, it's all the same colour. So this is what you have So that's the only way you know which is the front and back. We've got four sections on the front and the three on the back. Okay, footprint, your ground sheet, your mat. You've got the grommets where the poles go through or sit in, they don't go all the way through, they just sit in there and it stops it moving around. 
you've got buckles to either attach the tent itself if you're only using the tent or the fly and there's four of them and there's two ways you know which is the top and which is the bottom where the tag is is the part that uh, sits on top so it's actually uh, sat between the ground sheet and your tent and also when you look at the poles here the tie up point is below the buckle We've got no wind today, so I'm not going to peg the points out until it's up completely. It is a, they call a freestanding, but it's semi-freestanding. Excuse me. To use the doorway, you are going to need to put a couple of pegs in. The rest of it will hold itself up. But there is pegging points all the way around on each corner at the back and on the sides. Now that one is the fly. And here's the tent. I'll put all the specs up on the screen. So you can pause the video and have a look. We've got the door at the front, so that's going nearest the camera. Next is to put the pole in place and put the ends into the grommets. So I'm going to put it through the tent grommet first and it's long enough to go through to the ground sheet, your footprint stroke mat. Easy. Right, I'm going to leave this one on the top and connect these first. Now this is the hardest part, just getting that one in. So as you can probably see, we've got nice tension there. Next, go around and connect all the hooks. Take a quick walk around and show you. We've got the tie up points here. There's one on the tent and one on the ground sheet. And here's the buckle on the fly uh, ground sheet and the buckle on the footprint. <coughs> and that's on top above the tie up point. And these are so simple to use. If I do it now, let's see. Give it a twist. Off, twist on that easy no more stressing i'm trying to force the clip over the top 
there's one of these on either side which connects to the fly of the tent and when you put, uh, peg the fly out that pulls the inside out and gives you a little bit more space and this is where the crossbar goes in just hooks in there nice now time to put the fly on again you need to find the front where the door is and the way we find that is we have the zipper so there's the front door Here's the buckle, which I've already done on the other three corners. Click it in. And then we give it a tug there to tension it up when it's all done. Just like that. And there's that little clip to the buckle. And here's the strap on the fly. So we're just going to clip that in. So we pull this out, it pulls the inner with it. Point out we've got four spare uh, guy ropes. And we've got one on here, on one side of the door, one on the second side of the door, one on the side here, so there's three, and one on the opposite side, which gives us the fourth one. So if the weather's going to be a bit bad or a bit windy, you can just uh, peg out the guys off them points. We've got another two on the back also, here and here. So if you really want to batten it down, you've got six tie-out points. And the next thing to show you are the vents to help reduce the condensation. We've got this one here, and it's a Velcro, and it's got a stiffened with the loop part on. Let's put it in its place. Walker to do one-handed. Do it this way, put it in, put it down, got it. And there you go, all the way up to an open bit, no mesh there, because you've got your main mesh on your tent. And at the front, same here, pull the stiffener out onto the Velcro, your hook and loop, and there you are. And you've got another tie-out point there, if you wanted to use it, to give your tent a little bit more stability and to hold that open also. But, so we've got one, two, three, and then we've got four, one on the opposite side, five, six, seven, and including that one, eight extra tie out points. At the bottom, we've got another one here, which pulls the bottom open to let the air flow and also gives it a bit more stability. We've got the corner ones, the lower bottom ones, which pulls it out, gives you ventil, the ventilation. Over here, the same. Simple buckles. You can do these one-handed. Lift it up, loosens, give that a tug, and it tightens back up again. The door. Starts here, goes up and all the way around. And we've got two pieces of Velcro, one at the bottom and one there. So we'll just zip that, open it. And this point here is awkward because the tent moves. So what I'm going to do is put a camera down, hold that there and then pull the zip. Got 
tie that point here. So fold that under. That's the rolling side. Twist it into place. And pull it through. That plastic buckle. Which you, you can squeeze in to make it easier to move. And that holds your door in place nice and easy. Two-way zipper. So we can move the top to the bottom. Again, there's an awkward piece on this when we're doing it. Bringing it up to here and up to this point. Nice and easy today. And then you get stuck. And the way we get over that is where this connects here to the tent or on the inside. This point here. All you do is push that and pull the zip at the same time. So, push the side in. And the zip's nice and easy. This point, on every video I've seen, they've mentioned how it gets stuck there. But that's all you have to do. Just pull that in a little bit and it releases it. It's just because that's pulling it at an odd angle. So if you push it in, it straightens it up and it'll undo nice and easy. Vestibule area. Not the biggest, but not the smallest. But saying it's a three person, you're not going to fit much kit in there. So in the morning you are going to be climbing over your kit if there's three of you in the tent. But as I said, I came with my granddaughter and it was great for the two of us. And we still got all the dirt in there to prove it. So again, we've again got another tie-up point here and the mesh door. Through the loop. Give it a squeeze and close it and let go. Space in the tent is big. There's plenty of room in here. My granddaughter and I, I slept on this side. My granddaughter slept on that side. And down the middle, we had enough room for both packs uh, and also room just to sit in there. Oh, excuse me, getting in. Yeah, we could sit in here with plenty of room with the pads on either side. You can see there where that little strap connected to the fly has pulled the side out, giving you a bit more space. And that's one thing both myself and the granddaughter noticed was if we try to sit up when we was laying in the mat here, the actual tent was touching us, but it's only a narrow tent at the top with sloping sides for the design. So it wasn't a problem because the only time we actually were, were there was when we were sleeping. We've got a pocket above that one, pocket at the bottom, pocket at the top on this side, another one at the bottom there, tissue left in their tent. And, and that's all the pockets there are. Your lantern hook is up here. Now that is a bit awkward because it's right next to the actual mesh, so you can't use one of your UCO candle lanterns. You can only really use uh, one of your electric ones, so it's not going to mount the mesh. But that's okay. And that's the view you get looking out. Right, two sleeping mats in here, and all our gear, with room to spare, and a little bit at the foot. Um, mine was a regular mummy shape. The granddaughter's was a women's regular mummy shape. And like I said, we had a pack at the bottom of hers down there, coming across, and then I had my pack, we had all gear, and we still had room for both of us to sit here if we wanted to. Now, I'm not the tallest, but this is the space I've got. I'm about five foot six, so what's that? Six to eight inches above my head. <laughs> but the f further you go back in the middle there, it gets even higher, and then it starts dropping down again. So I think if you've got three sleeping mats in here, it's going to be tight squeeze for all three of you to sit. It's possible. Uh, be a squeeze. I think personally, this tent's for two people. Now, Major mm, Height Cloud Up 3 tent. What do I think of it? Quality wise, it is good quality. Uh, when you actually see it and feel it, 
and spend the night in it. It's not cheap. You don't pay a lot for it, but it doesn't feel cheap. Uh, personally, would I use it as a three-person tent? Me personally, no, because we a bit of a squeeze, a bit tight, and all together. I don't like leaving my pack outside, especially here in WA, because the amount of ants and critters and everything. I'd rather have it in the tent with me to stop all the creepy crawlies and bugs getting into it. Would it be good for a couple of adults and a child doing it overnight or car camping? Yes, I think it would. I think it would work really well for that. Two people hiking. We want to share the same tent. That's a yes as well. It'd work. Like I said, I had a regular sleep mat in there. A mummy shaped one. My granddaughter had a women's version of a mummy regular sleep mat. She had a bit of room at the feet end. Uh, put some stuff. A uh, pack, actually part of a pack right now, and came across the bottom of the tent. My pack went in front of that. And I wasn't kept carrying this small pack I've got now. I had my Matilda with pouches on and everything and extras because my granddaughter coming. We had space left after taking our boots and shoes off and putting them inside the tent with us. There was still enough room to sit on the floor between the two of us, or well, between the two mats. Both of us could fit on there comfortably. Plenty of space above the head for most of the tent. And the closer you get to the foot end, the less headroom there is. As a young child, they could probably fit at the front foot end quite comfortably. So, all in all, it's a pretty good tent. Like I said, it's not one I was going to buy. I only bought it because my granddaughter wanted to come out with me. She's eight and a half, and uh, she's been asking since she was two and a half to come camping with Poppy. And it's only just now her mum <laughs> let her come. Or in a sense, her mum didn't let her come. My granddaughter told her she was coming with Poppy, so. <sighs> uh, a new hiking buddy in the making. My usual tent would be at least, or should I say the biggest would be a two person tent. Because that's all I'd need for myself or one of my bivvies. Uh, yeah. It's a nice tent. So if you're after something reasonably priced, uh, reasonably good quality for you and a hiking partner, or to go with your wife and one of your children, or your husband and one of your children, partner one of your kids, or your dog, it'd be a perfect tent for that. It weighs, I think, about the 2.5 kilos. That's, if you didn't notice, I put the page at the front, at the beginning of the video, shall I say, with all the specs on. Well, I carried it with all the rest of the gear and the extras. There wasn't much difference to carrying a normal one or two person tent. And if there's two of you, two adults, you can split that between you. But I want to thank everyone for watching the video and if you've enjoyed it and you're not already a subscriber please go down below click on the subscribe button click on the notification bell next to it and select all so you can be notified of all upcoming videos and if you are already a subscriber again I thank you very much and everybody like the video so until next time Get out there, have some fun, and take care.